Welcome to another edition of Talking Sample. Round four is done and dusted. My name is Andrew Hayes. Great to have your company this week. NIDA is out, so we've brought in one of the absolute big dogs. Big recruit for the sample in 2022. His name is Jordan Murdoch. Uh, Murder, first of all, welcome. Thanks, mate. Uh, glad to be here. Mate, good to have you in the competition. Um, take us through the move, and I suppose it's been a short stint, stint so far, but things are looking pretty good at the base. How's it been? It's been really good, yeah. So, moved, moved back from Queensland in September last year, and was was pretty happy to yeah I, I guess join the old club again and and come on and we've started started this year pretty well obviously having our first loss on the weekend but um, yeah we we still got a lot of improving to do I think I think if you look at it we've we've probably played yeah uh, four or five really good quarters and and been able to win on the back of that um, so yeah we'll go and reassess and and do all we need to do and look forward to North next week. Uh, we'll get to the game a little bit later on because it was an absolute cliffhanger at the end with a late opportunity for the base to steal another, another game one, like you yeah. guys have been very yeah. good at doing. Um, let's talk about your AFL career quickly. Over 100 games at the Cats and in a few seasons at the Suns. I think I know where your heart lies. It's probably going to be Geelong. Do you look back now, at particularly the Cats, and say, I mean, are you rooting for the Cats every weekend? Uh, it's sort of... It's sort of hard having played for a couple of clubs. You sort of don't know, and and after after being in the AFL for ten years, you've got mates at all clubs. So I've got some really good mates at Brizzy, and um, and even even some sort of locally as well. So you and coming back to SA, you sort of tend to to get drawn into one of one of the two clubs. Um, so it, look, my heart's always with Geelong. Um, was able to spend seven really memorable years there and spend a lot of time with our overlord Dan Menzel as well. Um, of course. So, yeah, no, it, I look back on that time uh, really fondly. Um, the standard, what's the standard been like for you um, shifting from the AFL to Sam? Uh, it's, so yeah, having, having played, I guess, well, VFL, NEFL last, uh, last three years, it's been, it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely a really good standard. Um, and like I've said to a lot of people, getting getting back to an actual AFL state um, and seeing seeing the youngsters come up from the under 18s and just the the quality and the depth of, of clubs is is just really refreshing and um, and I guess the the support that you see at the Sample as well, seeing seeing the crowds and all that at state league level is is awesome. So I've really enjoyed that and. Uh, yeah, it's it's awesome to see our guys uh, guys go really well as well. It's been a really tough years, a couple couple of years for I mean every cove in every competition, but in particular for the sample and state leagues across the country. You've joined a really good, strong club. There must be just a, a really nice feeling at the base at the minute. Yeah, yeah, there is. I mean, I guess uh, like like most clubs, we had had a few leave at the end of last year, um, but we were able to retain a lot of I guess our. our our best players, our spine, and and add a couple as well, and and also like like we've seen the last couple of weeks, we've got some really good young kids who have come in. I think from the grand final last year, we only sort of have 11, 11 who played, and so it is it is quite a different team, but we're able to keep winning. Um, I think at this stage, like I said earlier, we just just need to put together some four quarter games and. And really, I guess, implement the the game plan that we've worked so hard on in the preseason. Mm, absolutely, um, we must thank the sponsors as well, of course, from I Perform Sports Injury Clinic, Brad Bain and the guys doing a sensational job down there. Um, we'll jump into some reserves scores for the minute. We'll go through at round five. We'll start with the Dogs taking on the Eagles. So it was a pretty rotten day in the end for the Dogs. Went down pretty heavily against the Eagles. Good day for the Eagles, it must be said. Um, for the Bloods, they had a bit of a win over North Adelaide, which was positive. The, the Bloods are doing very well in the reserves competition, so there is some depth coming through. Um, for the Panthers, got absolutely walloped by your mob, so there's clearly some depth coming through at the Tigers as well. Yeah, it was, by all reports, one of our, one of our best games. It was, it was quite early, so um, usually we like to watch them, obviously, before our game, but they were, they were playing down at South at, at 9 o'clock, so... Unable to watch them, but the boys obviously had a really good attitude and played some of their best footy this year, so really pleasing. Um, and finally, to wrap out the run as well, Sturt's uh, got the win, 30 points over the Red Legs. So the reserves uh, live ladder. Sturt on top, West Adelaide sitting pretty in second, followed by the Eagles, the Bays, and North Adelaide round out the top five. So 
It is the end of week four. We're starting to get a, a real probably feel in the league side of who is really, really up and about. Your boy's doing very, very nicely. Um, let's start with that uh, game out at the Ponderosa. Eagles were just too good for the dogs. 50 points. I mean, this is probably predicted by a lot of people. Um, the Eagles are going to be very strong, and the dogs are probably more of a developing side this year. You guys have played the Eagles. They're really going to give you guys a bit of a shake this year. I think, yeah, like, uh, like I sort of said to a couple of boys at the end of last week, I think it's like we're both going to be there and thereabouts again. Um, so a team like the Eagles, obviously, they've been had a fair few go as well, just not through any fault of their own. And um, they're able to bring through culture some really good guys up. And again, yeah, they, they're playing some good footy and they're going to be up there for sure. It's probably to no one's surprise as well that someone like a, a Rolly Knight's really starting to find his feet again this season. Another 31 disposals. He is probably one of those guys, and you'd be, be able to identify it better than most people, that I mean, could quite easily still be playing in the AFL system. Oh, I think so. I think, I think when you look at the, the depth of the overall competition, there's, there's guys that, that stand out. Um, I guess, yeah, it, it, it's, yeah, I think him, um, Putney's really impressed me last week as well it, as a good young kid. So, yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, <laughs> exactly what you said. Mm. But they're pretty damn good. Uh, we'll move on to the next game. Uh, it was always going to be tough for the Bloods. They made a really good solid start before the Roosters found their feet. There's been a couple of games that the Roosters have played this year where they've had a really slow start before they've brought it home. They did that a couple of weeks ago against the Dogs as well. Uh, it's 15-15-105 to 5-5-35. The Roosters are in that bracket now as well where they're sitting in the top five where I suppose I said before that we're starting to get a feel of who's up around the pointy end but I'm not sure what North Adelaide could do because they look pretty polished. Yeah, I think I think they go top after after this week. So, um, yeah, we, we've like I said earlier, we've we've got them this week, and uh, I think I think they just dominate through position uh, possession, and they've got a really good core uh, midfield, and some of the new forwards that they've sort of brought in have been able to play some really good footy and. Um, yeah, that's that's an impressive result. We we had a we've only had a trial against the Bloods down at Richmond, and they were they were pretty good there. So to to have such a good win there is uh, really impressive. Uh, next game was the Crows taking on South Adelaide down at Norlunga. Um, the Crows were challenged all day, but in the end they were too strong. Eleven point winners over the Panthers. So the Crows are doing some good things. They're sitting third on the ladder and. In saying that, you guys did something absolutely phenomenal a few weeks ago. It was a 60-point turnaround in the third quarter. But I suppose for the Crows, we've been saying this all week, as long as they're healthy and they've got plenty of blister players to choose from, they're going to be strong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was unfortunately out, uh, out with COVID for that one. So it was, <laughs> it was uh, an interesting viewing experience. But um, obviously, obviously a young side. So uh, I think that third quarter you talk about, we were able to sort of get momentum going our way and then perhaps that that inexperience wasn't there to sort of uh, combat that but yeah th I, again they've they've had some really impressive results I think early on they were they were winning so good like winning quite well so good for the Panthers to sort of come back and and really try and steal at the end um, this is gonna be I'm just gonna throw this to you as a really broad question Port Adelaide 69 the base 66 three-point loss. Take us through it because it feels like both probably sides did, but you had your opportunities. Yeah, we definitely did. Like, you look at it and it's, you know, nine goals, 12. So, it's, yeah, it's, you know, 21. We've got two more scoring shots there. Like I sort of said to you, we, it didn't probably feel like that. Like, coming off the ground, we, we probably felt like we were the second best, best team on the day. And um, to Port's credit, they, they play really well. They had, I think, four players come back from Cairns that morning. Um, and, yeah, they, they just played some really good team footy. They had some really good young forwards really play, play well at that end. And, and their backs, especially early, really torched us. So um, I guess, you know, the positives are that we're, we're three points away having yep. probably played pretty bad. Um, Sam May is, is such a good player when he's playing at this level. He's the type of player that I, I hope he plays more AFL football. He deserves to do it. Luke Partington is in the Gary medal winning form. He's getting a stack of it. 
and I might be Lockie Hosey's biggest fan. There's there's nothing better than a Lockie Hosey goal and a celebration and the strut that comes with it. Yeah, <laughs> he would have been happy with the result in the weekend, albeit disappointed with the loss. Yeah, he's an absolute ripper, Hose. Um, he, yeah, he came and came into the preseason and just had it, had just tore it to pieces, and he's coming to this year just flying. So great to get that result for him. But um, yeah, like we said, we're we're looking to get better next week. Uh, final game of the round saw Sturt take on the Red Legs. Um, two good Sturt were for the Red Legs. So Sturt's another one of those side who's sitting in the top two now, who could pretty much come up with anything this year. Have you seen their form? They're obviously playing a really positive brand of football, which is what you'd expect from someone like Marty Manor. Yeah, we we played both these teams um, early on and. They're just two really good competitive teams. It would have been great to see that midfield battle. I, I, that would have been awesome to watch. Um, obviously, Big Davis getting six is, is probably the difference there. Um, but yeah, they're, they're two pretty impressive teams. And um, and yeah, again, we just probably got away with the win against Sturt early on. Um, so yeah, definitely look for them going forward. He's an interesting one, eh, Davis? How how do you plan him? Because he's no one's moving him. He's too strong. Yeah, I think so. We have, we have the luxury of being able to play Big Sammy Durden yeah. on him, um, and yeah, and Durden has sort of shown his quality throughout yeah. the competition. So we obviously, certainly not take uh, Big A that, uh, that lightly. I think he still kicked a couple. Because he's just canny around the around the goals and is able to get a few front and squares and and then just finishes his work when he does get an opportunity. So, yeah. Um, let's have a look at the, uh, the live ladder for the league and North Adelaide is on top, which is not surprising because they're a very good side. But Sturt comes next and then the Crows followed by your Bays and then the Eagles have jumped into the top five. So. What is unbelievable is that you got to the stage of the season, first loss, and then bang, down to fourth. Down to fourth, It's that close yeah. for percentage. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, had we not sort of won with the last gas last week, it would have been the exact same. So I guess I guess from our end, we, we played um, played five really good sides so far. Um, and yeah, we, we're just looking, <laughs> yeah. It's it's just amazing how how the top of the ladder is is looking yep. and it's there's plenty of depth in the competition. I suppose yeah, you talk about that depth. You've got Nord at sixth and then the Panthers at seventh. Uh, myself, I've I've tipped the Panthers to do some big things this year. Um, does that surprise you at all, or is that just how tight the competition is? I, I think it's quite tight. I, I can only really talk for the teams we played, but obviously Port Adelaide are uh, probably better than what that. One and four yep. looks. They they took Sturt um, all the way sort of last week, and we we you know we know how good Sturt are. So Nord Nord are a really good side, um, and yeah, I mean we we get a challenge next week. We get to get to play the top of the ladder. Very nice. Um, we will wrap up and we'll do a bit of a weekend preview very soon. But now it's time for everyone's favourite segment, and that is the bunker with Mids. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome to The Bunker. It is our last segment of The Bunker that we are doing. So we've obviously had power rankings, which are coming back next week. We've got the quiz in a few weeks. We've got our 3-2-1 MVP Player of the Month to come again. And what we're doing today is the top 10 plays of the month. So really exciting, some great players this month and a couple of nice goals in there that you'll see and a few really good grabs as well. So let's head to our top 10 plays of the month.
fullback to Kobe March, who now tries top of the square. Out quickly, Dan Menzel. Arms take it, no whistle forward coming. Troy Menzel, oh, there's a touch of class around the body. The quick reply. Oh, terrific forward craft there. Troy Menzel gets it done. Much needed goal for the Eagles. A hit back very quickly. Hackett forward. All comes out again. Ramsey spins backwards. Turner, this will be an absolute miracle if it's cut off the knee, and it has. South Adelaide back to a two-point margin. As being a fast guys, the kick was good from Miller. Didn't quite take it. Here's an opportunity now for Lockyer Jr. Goes one way, then the other. Can Nigel kick a goal? Nigel can kick a goal, you betcha! The excited machine, Nigel Lockyer Jr. Lights up prospect over. Frederick's ball was good to the outside of fire. From the Crows, good work in there from the big fella for Port Adelaide. It's been laced. He's a back to Bergman from the arc of 50. He's got Wilson backing back, and Rabs has taken a no. Wilson suckers off the ground. Don't tell me it's a goal from Wilson. What a miracle goal laying on his back. Wilson does what Wilson can do. Down pressure from behind from Jackson, but the kick from Phil Thorpe found right. Can he get six? Is he going to give it off to a teammate? He'll kick it long down to the goal square. McAdam! McCann with the fly, McCann with a goal. And a highlight reel is Shane McCann. He gets his third. You could just see him set up and waited for it perfectly. And the mark flew over the top. Very nicely done there, men's. A few interesting questions have come out of that murder. And that is, I mean, first of all, the Bay is taking on the Eagles. You're running goal. That's a bit stiff. That must have been ranked number 11. Uh, I, I dare say, I, I think, um, think men's rated it pretty highly. So <laughs> someone, someone outside of men's um, must have put, put that to the side. And look, credit where credit's due, if it wasn't Daniel Menzel putting that together, then maybe Menzel would have got a little higher there and as well he's been on fire, as we know. Um, let's take a look at round six, a bit of a preview. First game, the Bloods taking on the Crows. I don't want to sit here every week and, and bag the Bloods and say, look, it's going to be pretty one way, but it would seem that this is a pretty obvious choice who you go for. I would say so at this stage, yeah. Adelaide, Adelaide would have been pretty impressive. It's hard to go past them at this, yeah. The only thing that you would say is that there's going to be at least two changes to the Crows. Ned McHenry and Brody Smith will be out under concussion protocol. So that's yeah. two listed players that won't be playing. But you'd expect uh, probably the Crows to get the job done. This is a really important one as well. The Panthers taking on the Red Legs. Two sides that definitely need a win. It's going to be at Cooper Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Who do you like here? I think, yeah, like you said, that they, they come in and, you know, similar position... Um, similar teams. I think down at the parade, you've probably got to back the red legs just, just with that home ground advantage. It's, yeah, they sh I think they should probably win that. Um, next one, Port Adelaide taking on the Eagles. Uh, that's going to be at Alberton Oval on Saturday. Do you think Port Adelaide have found their feet? Because bear in mind as well, you'd probably expect Miles Bergman to come in. He either plays in the sample or maybe he goes straight into the AFL side. But what it means is another listed player probably comes back. They look pretty strong. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we played these two teams the last two weeks and they've both been really impressive. So I wouldn't be surprised if it goes either way. Um, I would, would back the Eagles just, just through, you know, continuity and they're, they're such a good sort of good side with great culture. But, um, yeah, Port really impressed us last week, so that wouldn't surprise me. This could be the game of the round, this next one. This is the Roosters at Prospect Oval taking on your base. You'd be looking forward to this one. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, quality. They're, they're the top of the ladder. Um, they've had some really impressive wins, and, and especially at Prospect Oval. So, yeah, we, we need to address a few things and, and obviously prepare really well for them. Um, but, yeah, I think if we do that, we're, we're definitely going to give it a shake. Uh, last game on Sunday is the Double Blues hosting um, Central Districts. I've got to say, uh, there's something about Unley, and it's just 
and call it a very interesting name because it's a public park and people can take their dogs on there. We won't say that uh, on air, but it's just a tough ground to play Sturt, no matter how they're going. They're travelling really beautifully. You'd be brave to tip against them, particularly taking on the dogs. I think that's exactly right. Um, they're playing a really good brand of footy. I do love playing at Unley. Look, it's, it's very sort of good suburban oval. And when we played there in, in round two, it just has a great atmosphere, some really passionate fans. So, yeah, I'd tip Sturt there. All right, that was our round six preview. Let's get back to men's the Eliminator. Yes, and welcome to the Eliminator. It is a sad day for us in the Eliminator. We got through the first four rounds of picks, picking a team, everyone was still alive. And then we have the, the guy in today from the Glenelg Footy Club. I backed him in, Hazy backed him in on the weekend, and unfortunately we are out of the Eliminator. So it means that Bonds, who's come in as our celebrity pick, replaced Nida. He picked North on the weekend, and North obviously got the job done against West Adelaide. So. Celebrity pick is the first winner of the Eliminator. Great to see that we got through those four rounds. Let's see if we can get a few more next time. And, and don't you worry, the Eliminator will be back in very quick and short succession. So, Hazy, a little bit disappointing, mate, but um, hopefully next time we can go a little bit longer and, and push these guys further as well. So, really enjoy this segment and we'll get back into it in a few weeks' time. Well, there you go. Thanks a lot, Murdy. Cost us. So we backed you in and we thought, everyone was listening uh, into the game a few days ago thinking, it doesn't matter, the Bayers know how to get themselves out of trouble. They'll pull this out. Hugh Stack had an opportunity. Not quite. Yeah, I think, even talking to some of the guys, I think uh, it was a fair few of them, it was their first time losing it down, uh, down at the Bay. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I think you had every right to probably pick it. But yeah, like I said, Port played really well and deserved the win. and. We've got a, a bit to do. Like you um, said as well, uh, maybe a little loss isn't the worst thing as well, just to give a few blokes a bit of a kick up the tail and who knows what you're capable of in the next few weeks. No, certainly. We'll uh, able to have, yeah, we'll have a pretty big review tomorrow night and um, yeah, obviously aim to get bigger and better. Reddit, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. It's been fantastic and uh, hopefully we can do it again really soon. No, sounds good. Thanks for having me. Very good. Um, just a quick reminder as well, thank you very much to iPerform Sports Injury Clinic. The guys, Brad Bain, doing some sensational stuff down there. We're going to be back this time next week for Talking Sample. If you get an opportunity, go out and see some local footy. Have a good one. <laughs>